Hi, I'm William, reporting for the Fun Robotics Network. I'm here with Team 26,000, Theseus. They were the winning alliance captain and inspired second place award winner. Learn about their incredible robot, their turret system, and their intake. All on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. If your team is looking for inspiration, check out the Studica Robotics FTC Starter Bot to get you going. Studica Robotics structure options are available in multiple colors with new components now available. Build better robots and receive a 25% discount off most kits and parts and apply for team grants when you go to studica.com slash robots. So going into the start of the seat or going into this design, what were some of the strategies that you had? Um, so when we first began the season, we had a call for two days, like we, um, that was entirely for season strategy. And that's when we discussed, um, what do we want to prioritize? Um, uh, what are our goals? And then we chose to make our bot a far, far shooting bot. It was evident from the season that far shooting and a turret for defense were really important. And that's why we landed on this design with a wide intake and a far side shooter to make sure that defense would have minimal impact on us. So going into the, the start of the design, can you explain some of the intake and how that kind of works? So the intake uses these mechanism rollers to vector the ball in, into the intake, into the main roller, which is a capstone grip tape roller just on a 3D printed beam. And the surgical receiving works and it just vectors in and rolls in place where the transfer stopper makes sure that it uh, doesn't go into the shooter. So we have a command that automatically goes to the shoot zone before shooting. So that's what you saw right there. So going into that one, how is that overall run? Is it powered by one intake or one motor or two motors? We're powering our intake with just one motor here. So we're running a bare motor from a 14 tooth pinion up to I think a 62 tooth pinion. And that's just with a GT2 belt and the main intake, the second surgical tubing and our transfer are all powered off of the same thing. It's the servo stopper here that stops it from entering the shooter. So really simple, just a few belts, one motor, and it works excellently. I see that it's a compliant intake. What went, why'd you go for a compliant intake and not like squishy wheels? The reason we wanted a compliant intake is that even though the main roller could be made into a compliant wheels, these mechanism rollers can't. And we thought it was really important to make sure that the intake contacts the bowl before like, be before the top, because it would give us a much more touch it on it. It follows the bowl's curve and gets it straight into the intake. So moving from the your intake to from your transfer, could you go through your the turret and how that kind of, I think everyone's curious about how the cable chain works. Yeah, so that was another thing which we talked about before the national competition. We, like cable management is something that's often overlooked. Um, you know, we see a lot of wires hanging out the sides of robots and stuff, and we wanted to have a solution for that. So here we've 3D printed a, uh, or here's a demo. This is based on the Aegis energy chain, and it's in a, like a, a rotary cable management um, kind of yeah, it's arrangement. It allows for over 360 degrees of movement from here all the way around this way. So that means that no matter what angle the robot is on, we can always shoot, which is super helpful for defense, super helpful for going to both far zones and it tracks the goal. So I think we're running blue side at the moment and yeah, it's, it's excellent. This turret is also powered by a bare motor on a 14 to 48 tooth reduction and then a 12 to 100 tooth reduction. And that's why it's really fast and that allows us to uh, point the turret towards the goal as quickly as we want. Did you use like traditional type of bearings or did you use like those bearing stacks that teams use? We actually used a, a bearing stack. Uh, one, because it's more cost effective and two, because it works really good at our regional competition. So here it's a thrust bearing on the bottom, a standard bearing in the middle and another thrust bearing on top. And that's lubricated with graphite grease. Um, grease or just graphite powder. And yeah, it's smooth, you know, low backlash, and it it's worked really reliably across the whole season. 
So now moving up from the turret to the launcher, how effective is that? And how are you able to shoot from the, the far zone without it kind of bouncing? So the far zone shooting is like aided by a few things. Um, one is the accuracy. That accuracy is, um, is good because of like the curved hood at the back here. It really centers the ball well. And also the transfer, of course, bringing the balls into the shooter all at the same speed. We also have copper tape on the back of our shooter to reduce backspin because it's compression that matters more than grip on the back of the hood. There's also many software things which we've done to make sure that that's reliable. So one of the key software improvements that we added was that I took a video of all the ball shots so that I can create simulations for them. And then we chose the trajectories which had the lowest entry velocity into the goal. And those were the most consistent shots that we had. How many motors are you running for your launcher? For the launcher, we're running two motors. Um, they're belted with a GT2 belt down to the, um, down to the main flywheel. Um, that's a 30 tooth down to a 24 tooth. So that's 7,250 RPM on our 72 millimeter wheel here. We've also got a steel flywheel attached to that to increase the inertia of it. And we've made sure that the flywheel and the shooter wheel are on their own shaft to reduce friction. So moving down from it, there's a lot of interesting packaging for this robot. Could you, could you kind of explain some of the, the design choices behind that? Uh, if someone can flip the robot over. Uh, so uh, we, in order to fit the turret, the current cable management is quite large and the intake, oh. we had to essentially uh, make sure that our drivetrain packaging was really small. And that's why we went with a bare motor drivetrain. It's geared and what we've done is flipped one of the motors around so the gears can actually overlap and that allows us to push the motors close together and overall make a more compact drivetrain. We also run a low RPM on this drivetrain as it allows us to have more torque to push robots around the field. How do you know which position you are on the field and where the goal is? So we mainly use odometry for our localization because we found that it's a lot more accurate and that it um, always knows where the robot is rather than a lime, uh, limelight which needs, which needs constant um, vision of the goal. So if you go out of sight, then you're not able to see the April tag. And that's why we thought the autometry was a lot more reliable, but we still use the limelight for localization when we have error in the autometry. So moving from your drivetrain now to your lift. So why did you choose to go for that one? And can you kind of explain the, the process, your thought process behind that? So Offset Robotics is a, a local startup in Queensland and they offered to provide us with two nano lift tubes for our lift. Um, doing so, we helped them prototype and improve their design. Um, and these two nano lifts are powered by two Axon Minis, and these provide us with 16 inches of extension upwards. We'll showcase this to you now. So as you can see, the current moves to the front. As you can see, the turret moves to the front, so our center of gravity is pushed close um, that way as possible. So one other question I have as well is, I see there's a lot of protection around your side plates. How do you kind of reduce the impact of other robots hitting into your robot? Well, we use these defensive uh, wedges. They stop the main robot impact. But before uh, before hitting our actual plates, which if, in case they were dented, would cause a lot of problems to the robot. Additionally, for our turret cable management, we were really worried about other robots impacting us. And as the motor is actually over, um, going over the drivetrain, so we added this TP guard at the front with this metal bash guard, which ensures that no robots can actually touch the turret and it keeps everything safe. As you can see from our sponsor plate, it's uh, very bashed up. <laughs> yeah. and one of the last type of questions I have is, I see you have the limelight at the front. What kind of, what does that serve for you? So we use the limelight for two purposes. Um, one is to relocalize whenever we have error in the uh, autopods. And two is for ball CV. So we run blob CV in which we uh, threshold all the color values for purple and green. And then we go to the biggest blob. Hey, thank you so much for sharing this amazing robot. Congratulations again. This has been Team 26,000 Theseus. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. If your team is looking for inspiration, check out the Studica Robotics FTC Starter Bot to get you going. Studica Robotics structure options are available in multiple colors with new components now available. 
build better robots, and receive a 25% discount off most kits and parts, and apply for team grants when you go to studica.com slash robots. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first.